presentation today is going to be by a fellow named David Boyd, and David works for Small Dog Electronics in New Hampshire, and uh, he's an Apple consultant, and today he's going to be talking about iPhoto Library Manager. Okay, so let me see if I can get him cooking here. I ask him if I can record. David. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Good. I assume that I'm speaking to all the Naples uh, Mac user groups, is that correct? That is correct. I want to... Hi! Hi! Glad to have you with us. Uh, David, I just want to see, is it okay if I record it? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to ask you, and you've got to give me permission. I, you have been granted. Okay. All right, can everybody hear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Speak. Yeah. Well, you'll probably have to wait for me to speak, right? <laughs> okay. All right, so... Um, I've made the introduction. You might want to say a few words about yourself or your company, and uh, it's all yours. Well, thank you, George. So my name is David Boyd, and I'm a Vermonter from a PHL. I, uh, I've been working and living here in Vermont for the last uh, six or so years. Uh, most of them here at Small Dog Electronics, and uh, I'm currently an Apple consultant. I've been spent some time turning screws in the tech department as well as uh, selling Mac and I've had uh, back, back in the day as well. Um, and, you know, I, I think that this is an opportunity for me to address a lot of people at once, which is pretty great. I love teaching and sharing, you know, knowledge I can glean from, you know, my own clients and being able to share that is great. Uh, and actually, what prompted me to write an article originally about this iPhone library manager was that I was having some difficulty with iPhoto with a couple of clients, and uh, Apple's got some built-in iPhoto tools, and I'll show this to you first, and uh, like show you where iPhoto really uh, maybe maybe doesn't do everything you wanted to do, and where iPhoto Library Manager can sort of fill in gaps. And it was definitely through clients that I've met who uh, you know, proposed those uh, needs and desires that I, I came to for, realize what it could do. So yeah, I'm ready to start if you guys are. We're ready. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do first is actually share my screen. Uh, we can try this out with George. Uh, at his home, so let me try that right now. Uh, I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, all right, so I, I have here, I put a library manager from Batcat Software, it's their, uh, their home page, and you can see here we're up to version 4 at the moment. Um, that's going to require 10.6 Snow Leopard. As far as I recall, there are versions uh, previous to this, um, if I actually, I did check that out recently, uh, but I was perusing. Um, Great, you can ask questions. Uh, IPLM 3, the previous version does support Leopard. Um, and I think it's still available depending on maybe whether you have a, you know, a, a, a sort of you know, machine. Oh, there it is. IPLM download software. You can actually go back as far as uh, version 2 or 10.2. Uh, uh, it's available to be trying to support an older version of iPhoto, uh, older version of OS. Uh, essentially here it does go across most of the features, uh, being able to create and manage multiple libraries. So if you decide that you really want to um, go get into the business of using multiple libraries, I put a library manager makes it a lot easier to sort of take images from and to. Uh, you, you may be you know, familiar with the ability to do that with iPhoto, but it's usually an export process that kind of removes uh, data, metadata, I should say, from the photos, oftentimes the way they're organized, for example. You know, there are ways of doing that, but it's a very manual process when you want to actually take images out of and either copy or cut and paste them into a new iPhoto library. Uh, you look at the search in a similar way that you would iPhoto itself. Uh, again, copy photos and their metadata, particularly into another library. The ability to find duplicate photos, being able to actually take you know, an iPhoto library which is full of duplicates, and you may have you know, wanted to do this, and again, there's manual ways to perform that task, but it's a lot easier when it's automated. Uh, you'll be able to merge iPhoto libraries, so if you have two, I have a lot of clients who actually uh, started out with an iPhoto library and then decided uh, that they'd get a new Mac and they didn't recognize the ability of the migration assistant, 
movement or just began uh, you know, using it um, as a sort of you know, new machine and started creating a new library and then coming to me months later to want to actually get them together. So this is a great tool for that purpose as well. And I can, uh, I can definitely recommend it corrupted uh, rebuilding, uh, rebuilding corrupted libraries functionality because that's actually the first uh, time I sort of started using it um, was because iPhoto had failed to maybe offer that. Uh, so I'll go right ahead and, and uh, actually, George, I don't know if you guys can uh, pose questions. You know, feel free while I'm actually uh, talking here. Sorry, just trying to get that buddy list making sure. If you have any yeah, questions. Yeah. Um, so feel free to type in. Uh, I can't hear any audio right now, so. If you have any questions, one second, David. If you have any questions he's asking, uh, you can go ahead and interrupt uh, during during his actual presentation. Vicki, do you have a question? I just had one question. Um, I used iPhoto Library Manager a couple of years ago, maybe two, three years ago. Um, and obviously it was before the most recent, which is I think um, number four. And I needed to use it with doubles. I had done some mergings and some separating with it and um, I really had a mess with doubles. And it really screwed up my iPhoto library with doubles. It, it didn't identify some, it double identified, it identified ones that weren't doubled. And I contacted the company and they kind of admitted that it wasn't that great at that point for identifying doubles, and I just wondered if there has been an improvement in what it, if they're using algorithms or whatever they're using to identify it. I uh, <laughs> let me just say a, a word about that a second, David. Uh, I I tried it out before this meeting the other night, and I had absolutely no difficulty okay. at all. But uh, I'm talking about I had massive number of doubles right. though, and it took me days to straighten out my iPhoto library as a result. So I just wondered if there's an improvement. And you were using version four? Yeah. No. No, that's, she was using. That's what a I much, said. It was before version four. She was using four. a much earlier version. Thank you. It might have been yeah, three version three or two or even the original uh, essentially. I mean, depending on how it's been in development for years, as, as demonstrably by this download list, for example. Um, I, I haven't looked through the change log. I haven't necessarily seen it pass, you know, prior to version four um, delved into that. But uh, I, I know that they definitely are trying. You know, it's, it's, it hasn't failed me recently, um, and I'll, I'll sort of demonstrate what it's capable of doing today. Hopefully, we can identify maybe where it might, uh, where the limits might be. <clears throat> uh, so if we go ahead, and I'll just minimize it here. I have a. A, a folder of iPhoto libraries have actually created for this express purpose. It may not be, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, cooking on television when you kind of pull out the finished product. But I, I certainly wanted to make this a little more manageable and a little more visually impactful. Uh, if you have 15,000 photos, it might be a lot of uh, necessarily uh, signal to noise ratio ideal for demonstrating capability. Um, so I can kind of show you iPhoto. And in fact, before I do anything, um, Holding down the option and command keys when launching iPhoto um, should provide you with the iPhoto library first aid. So this is sort of usually when you're trying to do any sort of repairing or rebuilding, as this would indicate, um, that's probably the first line of you know fire you would you would go after with uh, iPhoto all by itself uh, without having to go into iPhoto library manager, being able to do maybe more more uh, rebuilding or repairing. So holding the option command keys, I don't know how many of you guys already know about this, but it is a feature of iPhoto. So if you click on iPhoto on the dock, or, or you, you know, launch an iPhoto library, and you hold on the option command keys, you'll see the repair permissions, uh, rebuild thumbnails, and repair the database, or rebuild the database if necessary. I'd say each one of these will take successively more and more time. And that's kind of why there is this hierarchy here. Um, Generally speaking, you know, I'd recommend kind of going with the first two and then third and then the fourth, of course, if, if you need to be. Um, this would be for issues like you have a thumbnail that's uh, either you know, incorrectly identifying the image uh, that, that it represents or a thumbnail that's you know, visible but there's no image behind it or a thumbnail that isn't visible with an image behind it. Those are the sorts of things that I'm talking about with corruption in your iPhoto library. Um, I will also just state that, uh, let me hit here. And we'll go right into the uh, iPhoto library I've got. 
Um, if we go back to Finder and go back to desktop and show you guys my iPhoto library as I presented here, I mean, I, I've been using iPhoto for certainly a number of years, and I think Apple's made some good steps towards preventing uh, user error, you know, us, <laughs> from uh, screwing up these iPhoto libraries. If you look past, I think it was probably an iPhoto uh, version uh, 6. I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, and I certainly, uh, you know, it just all melts together sometimes, but certainly at one point or another, Apple decided to take the iPhoto library folder and make it into a package. And, you know, I think they evidently did that because they decided that you know, there were too many people probably with issues where they were you know, sort of taking things in, putting things, or take, putting things in, taking things out uh, behind iPhone, iPhone's back, and that easily creates corruption. Um, and, I, and I understand that uh, the way iPhoto organizes images is not necessarily how you would have done so with another application, or you know you would have done so on another platform, or even on your, you know, again on a Mac if you were to do so manually, image capture, let's say. You know, this is not something that's accessible via Finder in, in any sense of the word. So even when you could browse it as a folder, you know, there were things there that you probably shouldn't be doing. Um, and, and that's basically the, the mentality with a lot of library-based versus document-based sort of uh, applications. And so I think Apple's done a pretty good job of preventing you know, the end user from getting in and, and looking at the images. However, I can say that it's important to recognize you know, that maybe your iPhone library is just that devastated and uh, you just want those files. And if you want those files, it's still accessible in the same way a folder would be. Uh, control click or secondary click, uh, the, the iPhone library and show package context uh, is a way of actually you know, going in and identifying uh, the contents of this iPhone library. And so you'll see here, you can go in and uh, look at column view in this case. Uh, masters, and then usually it, it is not to say human oriented, but there is some logic to it. Um, here are basically the images that I've got contained there. There, there are my photographs. Uh, so this is still accessible um, using the show package contents in the contextual menu, but you know it's certainly not. It shouldn't be necessary. It's the tack that I would take if you were to find yourself really in a situation where this iPhoto library is irreparable. That's the next step is completely rebuild it right um, manually, um, and it's still accessible. I think that you know the, the, the Apple's ideal, you know, their intention is that everything that you would want to do with your photos is doable via iPhoto, and maybe the learning curve is higher than your file browser, maybe not. But you know, essentially, whether it's importing, organizing, editing, or sharing your photos, they hope that you should be able to do it within this you know nice window we have uh, for iPhoto, and so. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions about iPhoto and its sort of structure. I just wanted to show you guys the library, how it works, how maybe it's different today than it was years ago, and the ability to actually open up iPhoto and maybe do some repair. If there's no questions this time, I'll proceed with a first task for iPhoto library manager. Right. Yeah, hold on a second. Does this program work with any version of iPhoto? It's a great question. Um, the, let me just see here if I can find out. Um, my phone version 9.4.3 is what I got now. Version 4 is usable with that. Um, the, uh, the, I think that if I were to go and, and sort of use the latest version of um, iPhone Library Manager, you'll see here that it requires iPhone 8.1.2 or later. Each of those former versions are going to probably require different, uh, you know, or, if you need to go after 3.8, for example, you can see here, I put a version 7, um, and I imagine that if you're running 10.4, you know, and, and running, I put a version 6, you would definitely want to go for that uh, version 3.7.3, let's say. So it, it's it's not necessarily explicit, but you can uh, locate the requirements there for that for that software. Good question. Uh, is there any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, as a result of a one, quirk, one second, start all over again. I'm sorry. Uh, as a result of a quirk with Super Duper in my backup drives, iPhoto shows three times as many libraries as I have, and therefore uh, I get confused about which library I'm in. Does, does this system display clearly the name of the library in the path? It does. Um, I, I haven't gotten into the iPhone library manager app 
space commanded briefly there, how to identify your line really well. Okay. So, I guess, if, if there's any other questions, I'll keep thinking. Uh, we have we have another question, and we're having some problems. I think with audio on your end. David. <laughs> David. Wait a minute. David. Yes. Okay. I thought we were having some trouble with audio on your end. Um, I'm just. You know, it's been silence, and I talk, and then I'm waiting for interruptions. Okay. Of course, lot, but I don't know when that interruption has actually ended. So, like, the okay. Go ahead. Have, we have a question. Right. We have a question. I have a basic question. Why do you need more than one library? You know, that's really just a personal preference, I'd say. Um, you know, the Apple, for the longest time, I mean, didn't really uh, support multiple iLibraries or easily switching between the two, in, like, for example, with iTunes. And I think they got enough people requesting that, for whatever their personal you know, reasons, uh, for organizational purposes, I would say in most cases, um, that, that you'd really be interested in that. Uh, I, I do have an example of, say, like a real estate agent, and they have an active, they just want to show off their properties. They, that they are selling, and when they go to you know a, a meeting with a potential client, they want to open up their iPhoto uh, library and they want to show off their you know properties and, and not maybe say the pictures of their children or grandchildren, whatever. Um, so there's a reason maybe you want to split your iPhoto libraries between personal and work. Um, and I, I'd, say, I'd say for other people, it might mean you know a different library for you know a different point in life. Maybe it simply reaches a a, a certain colossal size, and they say, well. You know, I think I, I don't necessarily need to scroll through all you know, 100,000 of these photographs. I can probably split it up into 100,000 in this library and another 100,000 in this library. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Yes, David, that makes sense. Uh, also, um, you don't have to respond. It can be a rhetorical question. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to make sure I answer the question. Uh, okay. Judging by the silence, I, I guess I'll proceed. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you guys can see here. I got uh, I got a library here with uh, two events. Again, we just consolidated this into a pretty uh, skimpy library, but something with at least some impact. Um, you see here, I've got a couple different uh, photographs that are actually duplicated, um, and in fact, some of them even have different titles. And uh, this is where I think the library would come in handy with regards to. Uh, possibly removing duplicates, right? Um, you know, this amount I could probably go and use the command to click and say, you don't need that one, or don't need that one, or that one. But I think, you know, obviously this would get very repetitive if the, uh, it was very much affecting the rest of the, the library. So what I'm going to do is actually quit iPhoto, and I'm going to open up iPhoto Library Manager. And uh, I've actually given myself a little bit of, uh, of an idea about what's actually, um, you know, sort of, sort of got. The issues here, name them appropriately. Uh, you actually see here the little green. So this is the Apple Library Manager application. Um, you see the little green uh, indicator, noting that that is my active library. Remember, iPhoto always opens up the last library that you had opened before you quit the application before, which just means that you know you can very easily get opening up into one iPhoto library and continuing to open up that iPhoto library unless you use the option key uh, when you open it up, choose it as the separate library. Um, if I wanted to go ahead and add a library that it didn't necessarily populate with, you'll see that I might have quite a few uh, on my own machine. It tells you what version of iPhoto they're, they're from, and when the last date modified as well. Um, so actually this one here after library one to merge is actually what I want to add. You can see here it's in my user folder, my desktop, that folder I created on my desktop, and there it is. Um, so I can add it to this left hand sidebar so I can peruse individual libraries uh, separately, uh, or possibly, um, you know, and, and, and obviously it sort of affords, affords the ability to possibly move things between. If I select the library, I do get the, the full name, as well as the location, and again, the version, the date modified, and the size. 
So really easy to just load up a couple libraries and try to compare them, possibly for the purpose of you know, merging them or whatnot. It's just nice to have. It's all very visible instead of having to open up iPhoto and then switch between um, different libraries that way. You really have no visibility when you're you know, when you open them up. Uh, it's, it's sort of in, in series as opposed to parallel like we are here. So in this library, I've labeled it iPhoto Library 2. Uh, duplicates. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and find duplicates. And uh, you know, I have a, an operation here that's immediately created. I can uh, you know specify some options here. In fact, I can actually search for multiple libraries to remove duplicates from more than one. Um, I have here rules, so I can trash uh, versions of the file, but except for the most recently modified version of that. So that way, if I you know we're, we're sort of incongruently kind of going after different. Uh, photographs. Um, I wasn't. Maybe, I was making edits to, you know, maybe a series of, of photographs, and they were mainly all duplicated. But of course, uh, they usually indicate that I imported them as, at a separate time. It would only go after the ones that I actually had been modified most recently. Um, and I can also do other things. I mean, I can fly duplicates with the best metadata, metadata um, meaning that they have more comprehensive. Uh, you know, information about the photograph, maybe that's, that's the original photograph, as opposed to uh, the you know, photograph that I maybe exported and then imported back in. Uh, I can assign keywords to duplicates so that I can easily search for them in iPhoto. Um, and I'm just, but I'm just going to try the first one here to crash. Um, and I'll go ahead and continue to search. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to analyze photos in the trash. I, I actually don't know exactly what I've done here within the iPhoto library to put things already in there. Uh, we can imagine that if you're going to be putting things in the trash, you may not want to actually analyze the things that are already there. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin that search. Uh, so it was actually able to find pretty much all of the all the photos that I had you know, accidentally duplicated here, and uh, I, I can basically see which ones will be put in the trash. Uh, you can see that um, you know, this is one of the photographs, and this is another. And you'll notice that. This, the one with the title actually is kept, and the one that I actually imported uh, after the fact is actually going to be removed. And I can go ahead and apply this. It does tell me the action will provide the you know, removal of 10 photos from the library, place them into the trash, and I can go ahead and apply that action. You'll see that iPhoto will open up actually during this process. In fact, it does tell you the iPhoto library manager may need to quit when you open iPhoto one or more times while it's operation in progress. Um, so iPhoto is still the mechanism by which a lot of this is like performed. Um, however, you know, certainly iPhoto library manager is sort of jacked into the, uh, the library structure being able to move that for us. Um, so here we have a set of images there that um, are now not duplicated. You can see that our original one, which had duplicates, is now back to 12 photos as opposed to the sort of 19 we had previous, or 22 actually. Um, yeah, so that's a good example of duplicate you know, removal. Um, you know, I think it's certainly something that no matter what you do, I probably should have said this right off the bat, no matter what you're doing with your iPhoto libraries, I really would recommend, you know, even if you know that library is just corrupted and, and full of duplicates and just, you know, just a mess, I would still recommend making sure you have a backup. I know someone mentioned SuperDuper before, uh, potentially, you know, Time Machine as well, or Carbon Copy Cloner, or even just option dragging, or you know, basically to another location on your, your hard drive. Um, if you're going to be working on a library, I, I always recommend you know duplicating your library before acting on it, and, and essentially you know maybe acting on the duplicate. Right? It's it's good to have a, the original backup before making changes to it. Of course, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the first time I opened up my the library manager, I can mention that actually. Uh, but essentially, that, that's going to prevent you from you know, making a wrong step and, and having the ability to sort of undo what you did. So I'd certainly recommend backing up. And essentially, you're doing this on a lot of different uh, issues. You're going to be removing duplicates and you're going to be merging, um, things like that. It might be worthwhile even backing up at certain stages so you can always kind of refer back to what you had before. It's crucial, and uh, I'm glad I said it before the hours. <laughs> David, the... Uh... The photos go into the trash in iPhoto, correct? Right, there they are. There may be photos here that I had before, but certainly the ones that I ended up um, you know, telling iPhoto library manager to put in the trash are now there. Of course, they're still in the library, just that 
right? If, if you're doing this on a whole, a, a large scale, you're not going to want to have to, you know, re redo that if it, if it messed up. Um, we have another question. Marilyn? When you go to the screen that uh, shows you which ones are going into the trash and which ones yes. you're keeping, can you change any of that? Or do you just have, I mean, for example, if it says this is the trash one and this is the one we're saving, can you uh, switch to the other photo? Let's uh, give it a shot. That's a good question. Um, so I just, you know, change this back and uh, what I'm going to do is put out photo keeper and I did not use automatically update the DT. Um, if we go ahead and find it again, um, do the same search. I don't know if we can specify. Yeah. Apparently we can. And we can probably undo that one. So the answer to that is yes. Okay. You got an idea. If you're looking at this one, I, I guess I do have some here, for example, maybe I should check off that, that metadata uh, sort of as opposed to modify. Because this one actually does have a title, let's say, Big Ben, and this one does not. So if I wanted to keep that title, for example, I might specify something. Um, this one actually, you know, for whatever reason, the, I think the uh, the date is is not actually that distinctive here, so it really has not much else to go off of. Uh, this one. Yeah, so, for example, I might decide to put this one in the trash with that one, and uh, not with this one. But yeah, I think that you know, there's definitely uh, some some fine tuned actions you can definitely perform. Yeah. Uh, is there any other any other questions? Slide? Yeah, we have one in the back here, Don. So it is searching only the photo <laughs> and not the uh, the name of the photo. Because I have a camera that only goes to 10,000 pictures. So I have a lot of duplicate numbers, but they're entirely different pictures. Does it Understood. Yeah. So if I, I, mean, I can go ahead here and try and change the, the file name, it, 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 it's not going to recognize that it's identical, even though it's got img underscore 1853. Well, it's just enough. Usually those are going to be different sizes. So right off the bat, if you haven't sort of renewed that cycle again, they're going to be different files, different timestamps, and different sizes. And so they are distinct photographs, even though they have the same file. And I put a library manager will be able to detect that. So, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Don, you have another question? Yeah, you recommended or perhaps you know, copying your library and then doing your uh, management on the copy. So then, can you describe your procedure? Let's say you did that, and now you sure. want to, what do you do, keep the uh, copy one and get rid of the other one? Can you just describe the procedure to do it that way? I can. Um, so Apple, you know, I know if you're my I put a libraries and I actually gave these sort of by ultimate one and copying them into the iPhone. But if I wanted to, I, I could take this iPhone library. Normally this would be of course in the pictures folder on your Mac, in the user folder. And uh, the easiest way that, that I would do so is just pull on the option key and drag it right alongside or possibly you know to another location like the desktop here. Uh, and it would just copy and paste. And now I have two libraries. If I were to go ahead and you know open this up here, uh, you'll see that this is actually one which has got some corruption in it. Um, one of these photos is actually not there. Uh, but I'll go ahead and actually put out the photo and open up this one. And it, and it should be appear the same, right? It should be identical. It is the same corrupted file there. So all that information is stored in the library. I now have two of them. If I were to go into iPhoto Library Manager and I wanted to say add or you know one of them, it actually recognizes iPhoto Library Manager through the default one. So if I knew this one was located, for example, on my desktop, and this one was located on my desktop but in another iPhoto Libraries folder on that desktop, I could actually go ahead and remove the library from this list. So I'm not even tempted to make any changes to the original even though you know, maybe it's uh, the one I ultimately will be uh, wanting to change. So at some point, you know, it, it's, I wouldn't say this is for, uh, best practice for you know, which one to, to sort of you know, do any changes to. Um, mainly that once you actually go ahead and, and make a copy, they're the same. Except for the fact 
that maybe iPhoto recognizes one as the default or the active iPhoto library, right? So that's why that check mark is really not handy right over here. And in which case, I know this is the last one I opened up, the one iPhoto would open up if I clicked on the iPhoto icon in my dock, let's say. And so I, I think it's important to, you know, just note that they're the, they're the same libraries once you copied them, and essentially the only difference between them is what iPhoto would want to open up next. Uh, as long as you recognize the difference there. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate, you go grab iPhoto um, from my launch pad here and put it on the dock. You know, if I were to go hold down the option key if you're an iPhoto while opening up, you'll see that I, I can choose which library to use and therefore change the default or active library. So if I want to go back here and choose the one that's you know, present in my iPhone library's folder uh, versus the one that's actually currently set up on the desktop right there. You know, and then of course you can change the name, of course, as well. So I want to say, you know, this is the, the duplicated one. Uh, duplicated might not be the best, but um, copy. Right. And that would identify it as you know, specifically a, a, you know, the library that I have been uh, used as a backup. That's the one I want to play with. <coughs> Does that answer your question? So if you made the changes on the one on the start, desktop. Start all over again, uh, So if you made changes to the one that's on the desktop and you're happy with what you got, then you just drag the one from your photo library to the trash and drive the desktop one back into your photo folder. Got it. And I think I would rec be recommended to put the you know one that you've made changes to, if you like those changes, back in the pictures folder, uh, if only because you know that's sort of a, a safer place for it than on your desktop, I'd say. On your desktop, it's actually you know, better chance of accidentally being you know, renamed or, or dragged into the trash. The only issue that I found maybe once in a great while um, with iPhoto libraries, again, they're now harder to open up. They're harder to make changes to, if, you know, irreparably, I guess you could say. But I have actually seen an instance where um, a user was using a, their mail application, mail.app, and they decided to uh, take an attachment. And they went within the body of the message, they clicked save, uh, and then they were brought a, you know, a, a file browser window, finder window, and they specified they wanted to actually save it, and they, the user knew where the iPhoto library was stored, so they went to the pictures folder, and they actually clicked on the iPhoto library. Now what that did was actually take the file and the file name and the location of that iPhoto library and replace it with a single image, and, and so it, it was overwritten, right? Uh, the, whenever you've got a save as dialog box, uh, you're presented with the option of overwriting a file by clicking on it. It populates the, uh, the title, the name of that file, and of course, it's where it actually is. So just like two, you know, physical bodies cannot, you know, sort of uh, take up the same space. Uh, that was overwritten, and, and that was actually a really bad situation, of course, because you've actually just saved a single file over your entire Echo library. That's still a, an area where you, you know, you can cause some harm. Uh, but for the most part, you know, if you, as long as you don't do that and you recognize that these are packages and, and you can copy and paste them, put them in the trash and duplicate them like that. Uh, I think it's safe in your pictures folder, at least a little safer than your desktop, and you can definitely um, now just double click an iPhone library in order to open it up, which is also nice. You don't have to go pull down the option key every time you open up iPhone. Just another, another uh, sort of word or two of wisdom uh, from, from my other experiences. I can proceed here with some merging as well if we, if we got nice. I think we have one more question. Yes. Okay. We don't have a map presently. So my question is, when you, I usually take the photos and make a copy to work on to shrink it or, or enhance it or resize it. Would sure. that picture that was resized be considered a duplicate of the original? Uh, no, in the case of you're using iPhoto on a daily basis, and you, you know, iPhoto itself, I'll go ahead and open up iPhoto here. Um, you know, the process of, let's go ahead and actually open up the one that's on our, um, in our folder. So this one here, for example, if I were to actually take this Big Ben uh, image, and I wanted to actually crop it or make changes to it, uh, I can actually duplicate right within the, um, you know, iPhoto window, I can command D or choose duplicate. Um, and then I have it renamed, and if I want to take this 
version that I wanted to edit it um, so that it's you know maybe enhanced or uh, you know, I can crop it a little bit. Um, I, I can do that all, and it, it will not be considered a duplicate by the you know by the eyes of by the library manager. Uh, so you, you shouldn't have to worry about um, you know having a, a photo that you've made changes to uh, be being so sort of often I'd be seen as a duplicate photo. Uh, <laughs> Understood what he said. David, um, what you just said that it will not consider a duplicate once you make the adjustments. Well, we can get we can test this out. Um, go ahead and, and make this a duplicate. Let's say there you go, Big Ben version three. Um, let's go ahead and, and open up our library manager, and uh, we can take a look at this corruption here as well as the. So I'm actually going to quit Hyper Library. I've done a little bit of uh, you know, changes behind the back in this section. I uh, normally would leave both these open at the same time, of course. Um, so let's go ahead and, and see what happens here when we try and find duplicates on this library where I just made intentionally a duplicate. And it did actually notice that exact one, remember? But it didn't notice the one I made changes to or modified thereafter. Does that make sense? Thank you, yes. Yes. You okay? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Yes, that made sense. We're ready to move on. Any other cool. questions? Ready to move on. George, there was a question. Oh, wait. David? <laughs> Maybe I missed this, but can he uh, look for duplicates in more than one library at a time? No. It's only applicable on a full library basis. If you were going to merge a library, you know, you could find duplicates in one, find duplicates in another, and merge them and find duplicates between the two. Um, that probably would be the sort of most uh, thorough, rigorous method. But uh, you could also just merge two libraries and it, it will resolve duplicates there, um, sort of by default. And, uh, you know, that's something that you can sort of do after the fact as well you know, if you, if you uh, wanted to. And do it any step along the way. But I think in your case, if you if you try and look at multiple libraries, you know, if you wanted to keep them separate, of course, you would just have to do one at a time. Um, it, 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 if you wanted to merge a library, then, then that would be maybe the process of making sure that you didn't have to do things like across them. Um, it's, it's a good question. I can see where you might want to take two libraries and between the two of them, make sure that they are entirely different. Um, but I don't I don't think that's something that I feel library manager is capable of this time. Okay. No more questions at the moment. Okay, cool. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is now that I've got rid of those duplicates in my original sort of I feel library two, um, I'm gonna go ahead and try and merge it with this original one which is merge. Um, I have sort of uh, a way of if you look at actually at events, I'll, I'll show you here. I have uh, paragraphs one, two, and three, and on my duplicate ones, the one I just kind of got rid of, two plates on, I have one in the wrong. So I want to make my these into one iPhoto library that has photos from all of these uh, great, great cities. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the merge library up there. And I can just drag and drop uh, right from there the duplicates one that I got rid of some, and then the two merge library I have here. And I can either merge it into an existing library, uh, or I can actually merge it into an entirely new library. And I, I'm actually going to choose that. And again, it's a little less destructive, of course, if you're trying to test this out. Um, it, again, all this you know might be worthwhile considering your available hard drive capacity, right? I mean, you want to make sure that you know if you have a 40 gig library and a 30 gig library, that you know you're going to want to need at least 70 gigs of available hard drive capacity when you decide to merge into a new library. It's the only other words of wisdom I can provide there. Um, so we'll, we'll make a new library in this case. I, I know that I have enough for this case. And again, here's maybe one of the questions I, you guys had was eliminating duplicates while merging. We're going to analyze the modified photos, meaning that it can actually you know, take a look at the one that was you know, made changes to, perhaps. Uh, not in the sense that you know, it was duplicated and then made changes to, but um, ultimately that you know, the, the one with uh, you know, the, the original is always revertible in an iPhoto library. So if you have two uh, photographs, one that's an original and one 
that uh, sort of is, is a modified, that's within the context of that original photograph. I, I'm not, maybe not clarifying enough, but I'm, what I'm saying is that when you decide to make a change to a photograph in iPhoto, it keeps the original. And the one that you see is considered the modified version. And that's the one to look for to make sure there's not duplicates among that. Um, and, and alternatively, you could analyze the original photo and make sure that you don't have any originals that are, that are uh, duplicated. Um, and of course, you know, the modification date, the oldest, uh, would be the one that's uh, sort of um, you know, merged. And then uh, you, know, you have options to combine contents of albums with the same name. I don't have any albums in these. Uh, but if I were to have an album that said, you know, Eiffel Tower and in one library and Eiffel Tower in another, it could actually uh, put photographs from the same, um, you know, basically into the same out into the same single album from two different albums by the same name. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and uh, preview that library. This is a feature that actually shows how this is actually going to look. Uh, so you know how I've got my. Uh, events laid out here. I have London and Rome and all three Parisian uh, albums, or events, excuse me. And I can actually see that I've got uh, even a nice album that shows me what the contents of the original uh, that will be preserved in the contents of both originals, I should say, uh, here. And I can go ahead and uh, you know, view duplicates if there are any, and there are none to be found in this case. And I can go ahead and merge. Uh, if there were more duplication across these two libraries, that, that would be one way of it. Again, we'll possibly open up and close iPhoto during this process. <clears throat> and it's, of course, it's creating an entirely new library, so I can still go back in, I can still make changes, I can recombine in different ways, um, as long as I you know, don't uh, import into an existing library, which using some sort of master uh, library. Okay. Almost done. Here. All right. So we have here 19 photos that were imported in this, in this final library. I have two albums that were copied. Again, it just basically created these albums, and the five events were copied in the form of you know, three from one and two from another. Uh, I can even view the block. I have truth that I've you know, looked at this uh, if that in depth. Uh, but it might be helpful if you're trying to troubleshoot a little bit, um, recognizing you know, if, if, if an image is, is actually skipped for some reason, uh, if there are any errors, that would be presented to you here in a little more verbose way. Um, so this is the it's very specific log for this action. You can see that any other iPhone library manager processes are also logged here, so you have a nice little time of uh, anything you're doing. How did you get to that log? I clicked view log when I was presented with the merge um, option. I, I went through the merge and it said it has been successful. It gave me that drop down uh, window here telling me that 19 images were imported, uh, five events were you know copied, and, and two albums were copied. And uh, I clicked view log there. Otherwise, it's in console, the application. You can go under diagnostic and usage information. So if you uh, find some of these other files for iPhoto Library Manager and it's their timestamp. So that's the most recent one there. And these are my find duplicates, for example, here. So this is sort of a way it's always going to be accessible if they're there in console, but if you're actually performing a task that's actually something that comes down there, uh, so you can go ahead and do. Um, the next. Hold well, on a second, we have a question. When you merge two libraries, to unique libraries. Do you save the originals that you merged? In this case, I did. If you, I told it to create an entirely new library. If you, save, yeah. if you save the originals, and then you have your new library with the merged library, um, how much more memory does that take, or are you just showing the photos in a different place? So here's an example of now my four libraries. We haven't touched on this one just yet. The one I copied to the desktop, but this is the one that we're working on first, the duplicates. And this one, if I were to get you know, info on it, it's about 72 megabytes. And of course, it's pretty small for an iPhone library. Uh, this one that says to merge, 28 megabytes. So this should come in around 100 megabytes in total. Oh, excuse me. Um, 
53. <laughs> uh, it's probably because of the contents of the trash um, and the way that it compacts. Um, that's actually, essentially, you're going to want to have at least available when you, when you decide to merge into an entirely new library, enough space that those two libraries could exist. So these two here, it's a good idea if I had you know, a library that was 20 gigabytes and one that was 40, that I have at least 60 gigabytes available on my you know, hard drive. Theoretically, you know, these are going to have other, it's, when, we get, when we get down into like the megabyte range, because they only have 20 photographs, a lot of that library uh, baseline there is actually the containers and other um, you know, files that are inside that library. The databases that are created, um, not necessarily the photos themselves. So that's why this doesn't really you know, line up to be exactly uh, you know, so the ad ad addition of each of them. Um, so you, but essentially, uh, you're not okay. you're not double you're not doubling the amount. You're just increasing it because of the additional uh, other data. Is that what you're saying? Well. Uh, in a scenario where you have two libraries and you want to make a new library that has the contents of both of them that are merged together into a single library that is different from each of the originals, then you are going to want enough space available on your computer, uh, on your Macintosh hard drive, in order to contain the two combined once over. And that, that's definitely a, a good thing to make sure of. Um, so if I had, a, again, as I said, like I have 60 gigs available on my computer right now. If I took you know, a 30 gig iPhoto library and a 40 gig iPhoto library together, and I wanted to actually um, take my, you know, my iPhoto library manager and merge them and create an entirely new iPhoto library, I would want uh, more than what I have available right now. I would probably run out of hard drive space, right? Because I'm at least 10 gigs over the combined uh, sort of source there. If I decided that I wasn't necessarily going to you know, make this whole new library, I would end up with maybe one library that has the contents of what it had originally, plus the one uh, that, it, that I uh, sort of merged into it. And that would be a little less, you know, volume taken up by uh, you know, the, the, the capacity of my drive, right? I would, I would not need, you know, the addition of the two, but maybe just one added to the next uh, on top of it. All right, we have another question, Jerry. Yes, uh, I assume that the merged library did not bring over the items that were in the trash that you had not emptied the trash yet. Is that true? That's a good question. I'm actually opening it right now, and you'll see that yes, the trash is empty. Um, that's not necessarily an album, an event, uh, or part of the you know, library uh, proper that's actually you know, visible here in the actual library manager. So here, in this case, I have you know, one in room. Uh, in Paris, the album or three minutes there. So, yeah. uh, so you're right, the trash is not going to go. You'll see that the two new albums are created that, that had, uh, have the names of the original ones. Bill, we have another question. Do the two libraries that you're going to merge need to be on the same hard drive? No. So, I mean, here in uh, not the library manager, I click add library. And I had, a, I mean, I need to choose manually. And I, if I had an external drive or devices here, I could navigate to that too. So very, very good point if you're trying to you know, alleviate the space constraints you might have in your internal drive, you might certainly want to plug in an external drive which has those libraries uh, and be able to use that. Instead. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes, Don? For purchase information, does this, a, can you buy it through the App Store? Is it an approved developer? That would be one question. Secondly, do you get free upgrades if you have an old, older version? Um, that is a great question. Um, I, I actually, I mean, it's certainly not advertised on their website. Uh, um, that doesn't mean that they don't have it. I, I would have to actually do a form of search for that on the App Store. Um, very good question, though. I, I think that the, the updates are usually significant enough that if you, you know, have a license from a previous version, um, there, there is an upgrade, you know, pricing that's less here, in this case, half, so from three to four. You know, I don't know how that will proceed in the future, but, you know, if we're using our current state here of an upgrade price being, you know, if you have a version three serial number, you should be able to get half off there, essentially. Uh, I don't know whether it's available in the, uh, can't have split, but I'll find that out right now. Nope, it's not. So, not available from Apple. 
but I, I believe it is approved developer. So you shouldn't have any issues with Gatekeeper. Okay, we have another question. Can you put on more than one computer? I have two. I have two computers. Um, well, it, it, you know, that might reveal something about um, how we're working here, George and I. Um, I'm using the same serial number that uh, I believe, George, you got as, uh, as for, for the tables. I, I'm working with it here. I think most licenses are designed to make so you know, that way, okay, with me using it here for demonstration purposes, and, you know, George obviously may having the, the actual license for that. Uh, so I, I think the license would, would indicate that as long as you're not using them at the same time on each of those machines, that your ownership of that would be fine. Yes, you can. <laughs> can, can you split the libraries that you've merged, or can you take them out by date? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd like to go ahead and um, show you guys. I actually want to test, truthfully, um, my ability to, to rebuild a library, and then I'd like to go ahead and show you guys some of the abilities for us to sort of parse out parts of the library and do it if you want um, to make, as you said, sort of a split between them. Um, if, if you if, give me a moment, I, I, I might sort of step into that rebuilding and comparing mode, and then we can go ahead and try it show you how you can move things about in different libraries. <coughs> Unless there's another question really, you know, specifically about merging or other... Uh, no, go ahead. Questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, look this library protect potentially <laughs> uh, Usually it wouldn't happen that way, of course, but again, I have here uh, photograph that I misplaced. I went and packed it and showed its contents and reorganized the library myself. Uh, and of course, I photo and I have the library manager don't necessarily know where that is. And so at this point, uh, I've got this library selected here again, duplicating your library for the purpose of backing it up and mm -hmm. performing this on either the original or the backup, knowing at least which one which I recommended. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is go up to the library menu and choose Rebuild. And let's see what it does. Um, it wants to save it as a new library. So again, worth having that hard drive space being a known quantity. Uh, and it, it appends the Rebuild there. Um, I'm going to include things that are in the trash and scavenge for orphan photos. Possible that that will help me uh, recover this particular image where the thumbnail is there, the image it represents is not. Uh, so I'm going to try and rebuild here. And, and see what it finds. Um, so it, it did actually, and this is the rebuilt version, um, and I can actually see here that it was able to locate that image of the Globe Theater uh, as compared to you know, the original um, did one here, which uh, did not have that, for example. It was not able to preserve the, uh, the metadata here, the strips the title off of it, but that was photos, as you see here, scattered. So that, that's kind of helpful. I, again, I may not be able to easily reproduce all forms of corruption, but this is certainly one where I went in and bucked about. And uh, here we are with uh, a rebuild option, and it's able to, you know, actually create that actual library with the uh, preview I just saw with that the library being uh, available to me. And so I'll just sort of go back and forth here between the two. We'll be able to see. And it, you can see here. Oh, I feel like library manager is actually placing this in the original order, so we, so we get a full view of that uh, original library as best as possible in the rebuilt fashion. Now remember, Globe was the actual title that iPhoto would have appended to that image. 
And when I moved it, that was lost. So the photo is present, that was found, right? But the you know sort of state we were in where that title, uh, that thumbnail, the image it represented was no longer in its place. The error that was indicated was the original photo, um, you know, basically as it was in iPhoto before I, I moved it. And the moved one was located, it just couldn't recover that uh, title. But it did reveal that the iPhoto library database did have a photo by the name Globe in there. Uh, and of course, that's like this one. So uh, that was pretty successful. Again, I can't guarantee that every you know, corruption you might have is going to be a success, but I think you know I, I went in there and did something that a user could theoretically have done maybe more easily in the past, but certainly not impossible today, and uh, was able to recover from that pretty gracefully. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any questions about that. It's pretty straightforward. There's not much you can choose to you know do anything with it. If you remember from here, uh, from to, to rebuild this, you know, I, I get to try and include things that are in the trash as a sort of way of extracting things uh, that might be corrupted as well. And of course, scavenge for the code is not inside the sort of structure that I put have set up in the first place. Uh, we have a question. Yes, uh, when you uh, started the iPhoto library, you showed us how to use command option when starting it, and you've got right. you got four uh, rebuild uh, capabilities. Does the does iPhoto library manager do anything more than those four activities? In my experience, it does. I mean, it, essentially, um, you know, the the four options there are sort of combined into one option, and and then some. Um, so some of the things with like the, the thing I actually performed would be interesting to be a test. Uh, maybe I'll actually send Georgia a follow-up uh, just because we're like uh, 45 minutes away here, another hour. But um, it, it ends up that you you know I, I, I like to try and make some corruption happen and see what iPhoto can do as compared to iPhoto Library Manager. In my experience with my clients, I ask them to you know proceed with all four of those steps, and some of those you know some of that corruption still remains. And that's where I actually found I put a library manager uh, was capable of uh, basically extracting things that were not uh, sort of available for the actual library rebuild repair tools to actually locate. Uh, so just from experience, I can say that yes, it has you know a better, more more thorough way of actually creating an, an entirely new library essentially based on what it what it finds, which is really what you want with a rebuild, while preserving as much non-corrupted data as possible. As you can see there, there's actually Reimporting what it could, and uh, you know, basically providing as much of a you know, sort of full view of that as possible. Uh, so it's, it's sort of a saving grace if you don't want to literally start over completely from scratch in a manual fashion. Uh, from what I found, it's sort of a great reason for being, other than the fact that it's great for finding duplicates and for managing, creating, you know, merging, as well as uh, parsing out your libraries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, go ahead. The last thing I wanted to show, based on one of the questions I got, in fact, uh, was sort of the ability to take you know, the actually merged slide right here, for example, possibly start you know, with, with some new ones, uh, with parts of this library. Uh, so I can actually go here and create a library. Uh, so I'm going to make this new um, you know, parse library. And, and that just gives me kind of a clean slate. And I can go ahead and go into my merge library here, for example. I can look at individual events. Uh, I can just take this uh, event, for example, and just say I want that in my new parse library. Right? Uh, it's going to actually go with head and period. It, it is a bit of a process. I mean, I've seen a sort of library manager in the process of merging a, a significantly large enough library. You know, it can take some time, right? Um, you know, to be able to open up my photo, import. It's definitely uh, you know it can take some hours in the case of merging. Uh, two significantly sized libraries, but in this case, you know, I'm taking a, a, a an album or an event, uh, you know, individual photos if you wanted to, and I'm copying a selection of that right into the this new library. Um, so maybe to answer one of those questions about how easy it is to go. We have a question. Can you copy into the new library by saying a uh, parameter of date, something pre 2010, if the photos are in another library? Sure. For that, I would probably recommend, um, let's actually go back here to our entire photos here, and um, so let's say 2010 
2010 the Verge Library. Um, good question. It doesn't offer the smart album capability that you might expect for that. Um, I mean, it might, that might be a worthwhile thing to do even previously. Um, you can see here I can search for a couple different things. Uh, none of these being things of, that are really metadata that would be timestamp. So in that case, I would probably recommend going into iPhoto and making a smart album. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. I'll, I'll try and uh, demonstrate. Um, these were all taken in around the same year, but definitely in different months. Let me go back into my <coughs> merge library and uh, find her. Quite a few. I'm trying to keep track of them all. So in this case, what I would probably do is choose a new smart album and then choose that the date is before, and then let's just say um, 2009, 2009 uh, June 1st. Okay. So that means it's everything before June of 2009, and in that way, I can relaunch I the library and make sure it's up to date. That new change I just made. Merge library right now, this album, which is the one, I didn't title it, but it is everything. From 2009, I would bring that into the library. That's the way I would probably recommend that, uh, just because of the search queries I have with available to my library manager doesn't allow me to sort of do that smart uh, search query. So good question. Any any other questions? Okay, go ahead. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say is that you have a, a really easy way of viewing these libraries on you know here. It, by, by icon, of course, or in a list view, which makes it really easy to kind of go through a significant uh, quantity of, of it. And that does allow you to sort by date. So that would be the only other thing I would say, sort of sort your photos by date and select all the photos and drag them into the library um, if, if you chose. So it's, it's kind of like a, a better, more finder-like view in some cases for large file you know, sets uh, managing them. Do we have any other questions? Do we have any other questions? Are you basically, uh, I think you're coming to the end, right? Yeah, I really don't to demonstrate, but uh, I'm certainly available to take questions. I you know, have another appointment in about an hour. Uh, that I'm, I'm to, to, I'm no, no. Happy to take some questions for next stuff. Are there any, any more questions? No, I think we're all set. We really appreciate everything. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. Quite a applause. Thank you very much. And great audience. Thank you guys for asking such great questions. <laughs> Have, a a good. Have a good day, and uh, we really appreciated your time. My pleasure. Take care, George. We'll be in touch. Okay.